Hello everyone, I'm Denise and I'm back with the University of Sewing and our Granny Sampler Project. We are on block number 20. So what does that mean? It means next time we get together, we'll be halfway through. Woohoo! Happy dance, little mini party. And there will be a little celebration. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Um, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, make sure you click that little button. Give us a thumbs up. Let us know we're going in the right direction. And if you've got any comments, tips, suggestions, go ahead and share those too. We're going to jump right into our block because it's a big, fat, hairy deal this time. So block number 20 is the pickle dish. And I have to tell you all, I don't think I like pickles anymore. I think this block has turned me off of pickles. I think it's a beautiful block. I could certainly admire the work that goes into it. I would love to see a nicely done quilt in it. Do I want to do a nicely done quilt in it? Probably not. But that doesn't mean I don't appreciate somebody else's work in it. So this was our test block. When I showed this to Margaret, she said, oh my, is it paper piecing or templates? The answer is yes. We're doing a little bit of both. So let's start off with what do you need for this block? Of course, if you're doing paper piecing, you might want to use your computer paper. That's easy. But I will tell you these tiny little points and all of this paper piecing in here, my suggestion is go ahead and get the foundation paper piecing or paper for paper piecing. It's a little thinner and it will make your life a little easier as you are tearing out all of those teeny tiny little bitty pieces. So definitely start there. You're also going to need your template plastic and we have the Karen K. Buckley's Perfect Heat Resistant Template Plastic. We're not using the heat aspect of it this time, but it does make a nice template. And then as I'm using those, I always like to use a Sharpie. This one is an ultra fine point, which makes a very nice line on my plastic. You're definitely going to need your add a quarter ruler. We do have these in the shop. They are back in stock. I've got the six inch as well as the 12 inch if you're interested. You might want to use one of these guys. I will say as I was doing the paper piecing, I would do a section and then trim and press and do another. And I decided at first I thought getting up and moving back and forth to the iron was a good idea. You know, you get up, you move around. That's always a good plan. But I think I was a little more efficient using my seam roller and then pressing the whole unit when it was done. So that's up to you, whatever works best for you. You're definitely gonna need a good little pair of scissors. This time I also found my little pin caddy here rather handy. Um, I've got tiny little applique pins in there. And those are the ones that we're going to use to pin some of these curved pieces today. Yes, we've got paper piecing and curve piecing all in one block. Whose bright idea was this anyway? Some crazy person, I'm sure of it. So um, what else do you need? Really just your sewing machine, some fabric and a whole lot of time because this block is very slow. It's a little time consuming, it's tedious, but I have to tell you when you get it done and even if it doesn't come out super, there's this really cool sense of accomplishment. And I showed my husband and he said, oh look, you're stretching. I said, yes, but sometimes stretching hurts and that's true, but it's a good thing to stretch. So I do wanna to say too, if you are looking at this block thinking, no way, give it a shot, try it. Even if you only do half of it, that's totally okay. Try something new, see how it goes. And maybe you do the whole block and maybe you say, you know what, I am not doing it. I'm not gonna put that in this quilt. That's okay too, and I'll give you a little thought. You could just swap it out for something else. I promise I won't tell. So we're gonna finish the one that we have today. So this is the practice one. It came out okay for a first time. Um, there's definitely some things I wanted to improve. So we're gonna get to the real one and see how that one's coming out. So I've got all my goodies in my little baggie here to stay nice and organized. Even my templates tucked away in there so I don't lose anybody. How frustrating would that be? So let's look at what we've got going on here. We've got our curved piece with one end piece on it. We're gonna sew this guy together today. We're gonna sew these two together. And then we're gonna sew this unit together. Of course, once this is done, that gets attached here, which is going to get attached to our semi-finished block here. 
So let's jump in, cross your fingers and hold on tight guys because it's a little bit of a bumpy ride with this one. I'm gonna grab my pins. And I have to tell you too, I'm not typically much of a pinner, but certainly with these curved pieces, it, my results were much better pinning. And so I certainly don't mind if it's worth the effort in the end, right? So we're gonna pin here, see how my, the corner here is going to match up to the corner there. And we don't need a whole lot of pins here. You can wiggle this guy around and I'm going to say this probably 10 times while we do this video. When you're doing the curved pieces, the idea is to straighten the fabric, but not to pull on it. If you pull it, you're going to stretch it, and then things are really going to be wonky, and you will be so disappointed after all that work. Alrighty, so you'll notice those aren't lined up. That's okay. We're going to work with that. Um, one other thing I would suggest that you have, and of course I can't find mine at the moment, is a good pair of tweezers or even a stiletto. I don't see any handy, but... You use your scissors? I can use my scissors. That's a good idea, Kayla. So what I'm going to do is pull this pin out just a little bit here, and we are using our quarter inch seam. I've got my 57D foot, and we're sewing on one of my favorites, the Tula Pink 570. All of our Bernina machines are awesome to sew on, but the Tula one is just kind of fun, just the way it's got a little decorative flair to it. And I'm going to sew right up to that pin. Now I'm going to pull that guy out, and let's see if we can use our scissors here and we're going to tuck this under how about a pin really your tweezers are definitely the way to go and if the fabric cooperates that's always nice too all right let's try this like I said, it's going to be a little bit of a bumpy ride. I'm going to lift my presser foot with my knee lift just a hair. Now I've lined up my fabric over here. So I can stitch a little bit. And then I can lift my presser foot again and adjust. Which is exactly what I would be doing with those tweezers. And we'll just use my fingers. And I'm stitching nice and slowly. I am using a 2.0 stitch length, a little smaller than normal. And just a reminder, when you're doing the paper piecing, um, you definitely want to use a smaller stitch length. So 1.5 is good for that. Hold that guy right in there. And we're going to go all the way to the end. And cut our threads. And let's see what we've got. Flip this guy over here. Lines up pretty nicely with the top of our curve. That's what we're looking for. And I'm just gonna finger press this one. And I'm gonna go ahead and trim these threads. I do wanna talk for a minute too about the paper piecing aspect of this. There's a lot going on here. And of course the paper piecing gives you these beautiful points and it really is worth the effort. We don't often think of chain piecing when you're paper piecing, but when you've got eight of these units, you might wanna consider the chain piecing. So I would sew, you know, get the first two going, and then when you get to the next one, do this one and do the whole row. Do all eight pieces of this piece. Sew them on, trim them, press them, flip them, and then do the next one. And do this one, and then do it that way. For me, it was a little more efficient, and that's also where I found my little pin caddy handy because I did use the little knife on the top here to trim. You could certainly use your scissors, but sometimes it's just nice to hold it over and get it a little faster. Um, take your time with the paper piecing for sure. Okay, so we've got this guy done. That doesn't look too bad. Let's go to this one. Now we're gonna talk about how to get this lined up straight. You gotta find the center. Flip this guy over and we're just going to finger press here to find the center of this unit. And you can see maybe there's a little bit of a crease right in there. We're gonna do the same thing with this one. And this is just to find the center. And 
and you can see the center there. Now we're going to use these wonderful little teeny tiny applique pins and do that so much fun um, curved piecing. Okay, so right sides together. I'm lining up this crease with the center crease on my paper pieced unit. And we're going to stick one little pin in here. Now, as you're working your way around, for me, it doesn't work if I try to do this flat. I end up with all kinds of puckers and fighting and stretching the fabric, which is not a good idea. I find it's easier to hold it up in the air in my hand, and I'm just straightening this piece along the outer edge of the back piece. I'm gonna put a pin right about where it starts to go off. And what I mean by that is right about where I need to adjust for the next section. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. And if you see, I'm bending it a little bit, which of course you can't do flat, but if you do it, hold it in the air, and then we're gonna put another pin. And with all those seams and that paper piecing on the back, it's a little tricky. Sometimes your pins don't wanna cooperate. And we're gonna keep going. Again, straightening, but not stretching. Are you guys noticing how many pins I've got on this little guy already? And we're only halfway there. And then this one, we're just gonna lift it up a little and put one more in. For somebody who doesn't pin often, this is a heck of a lot of pins. But I like the results much better when I pin. So same thing this way. Hold it in my hand and bend it a little to get it to meet nicely. If you're fighting with it, regroup. Let go, put it down, and regroup. I heard somebody say recently, fabric has memory, and when you stretch it, it's hard to get it to remember to be unstretched. All right, now just for fun, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have eight pins in that little tiny section. That's a lot of pins. But now we're gonna stitch it together. So let's get our thread here. And then this first one, I am going to take it out and I'm going to readjust just a little bit here. And I'm going to use my finger to hold that nice and snug. My quarter inch foot, I'm going right up to that guide. And we'll take a couple stitches. And now we're going to pull out that next pin. And as I pull that pin out, I'm putting pressure here where my finger is. And I'm also making sure that things feel sort of straight and flat. And if I can't tell, I'm going to use my knee lift. My needle is down, so I'm holding everything in place. But I can tell I don't have any puckers under there. And this is definitely a slow process. And we're gonna lift that pin out and do the same thing. Make sure things are nice and flat. And I am turning the piece just a little bit, just following the curve of it, the natural curve. And just a caution, you do not want to sew over your pins. Please don't. If you like your machine, please don't sew over your pins. If you don't like your machine and you want a new one, we can help you with that, but still don't sew over your pins. Bad idea. And I'm going to, we're gonna adjust here real quick. I'm not liking the way that stitch looks and now I know why it was operator error. I forgot to engage the dual feed. So the foot was doing its job, but it couldn't do it as nicely as it should have. And I'm just adjusting again underneath. I 
I'm curious if you guys think this kind of block would make a great project to work on at a retreat where you can just take your time and do your own thing and no interruptions or do you prefer something easier and more of a fast finish at a retreat? I'm going to adjust just a little bit here. Now my goal is I want my stitching to end right where these two fabrics are going to meet. So you can see I'm just a little off center here but I know that that's gonna give me the nicest looking block in the end. So I'm gonna turn just a hair and keep going. And now I'm happy with where that is. Let's trim that. A little extra thread out of here. Let's see how we did. And we'll just lay this out. Not bad. I think that will work nicely. And really what I'm looking for is it's consistent across here. And then if you look at the curve here, it follows along nicely here. So I'm pretty happy with that. It's a little off there at the end, but that's okay. So let's go press these two pieces and then we'll see if we can get them stitched together. We've got more to work on. I felt like this was one that um, we definitely needed to do the sewing today as opposed to just talking about the sewing because it is so unique and a little different and yeah it's a little challenging let's get my iron to wake up here and i do have my clapper today i remembered that and i didn't use mine a lot doing that practice block i'm gonna give this just a little shot of steam here and flip him over and while that guy is hanging out, let's give this one a little press. And one more on the back. And just for a second, we'll let that guy sit there. And I do want to talk about, while we're here, we're going to trim these off. I don't think the directions say anything about doing that, but I found that they were in the way and it was hard for me to see. So I was definitely happier trimming off those little dog ears. So let's go back and do that. And then we'll put this piece together and keep our block moving right along. We'll just give this a little haircut here and a little haircut here. All right, now let's put these guys together. Same idea. We're gonna find the center of this unit and the center of this unit and pin just like we did before. Pin and pin and pin some more. Can you pin too much? Gosh, I'm not sure. Kayla says no. And I, I can't imagine what pinning too much would look like and why that would be a bad thing, other than it might be a little inconvenient, but. As long as you don't sew over the pins. Definitely. That's all that matters. Definitely a bad idea. Bad, bad, bad idea. All right, so we've got our centers marked. And let's line things up again. We've got the concave here, convex here, and we're gonna match that up and start pinning like a crazy person. I was sharing with my neighbor that I was working on this block and said that, you know, we would be finishing it on the video and there would be lots of tips and thoughts of, you know, how to do it and of course what not to do. And my neighbor's suggestion was just don't do the block. <laughs> Which of course is an option, but what fun is that? We like a challenge, right? And like I said, even if you never do this block again, do one, do half of it. Stretch. Stretch and grow and learn something a little different. All the kids are going back to school now, so it's time for us to learn something too. Now this one, actually, so I've got it pinned from the center out. I'm gonna back out a little farther and go to the end and match this up before I do in here. I'm 
and let's see if we can get this to line up nicely here. And again, having it in your hand, I, I'm sure it's hard to see on the video because I am moving it, but it's easier to do than having it lay flat and it's wiggled on me. If you could use um, Wonder Clips doing this, that's fine too. For me, the pins work a little better. I would love to know if you guys have done a block like this before. And really what I wanna know, for me, this is the most challenging one that I've done so far. What's the hardest one that you've done? And I would love to know about that and how it went, whether you would do it again, was it one that most people would agree is hard, you know, like a double wedding ring or the pickle dish? Or was it just something that for some reason your brain just made really hard, even though it shouldn't have been difficult? I, I'm pretty good at that too sometimes. Okay, now we're gonna fuss with this one a little bit. And tuck that in there. This block is definitely not a beginner's block but that doesn't mean a beginner can't try it. And that doesn't mean you shouldn't try it. Kay was trying to get in there with the camera and I hope that you guys can see and my fingers are not in the way. This could definitely be one of those that you finish the block and you go, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. And maybe you make a pillow or something out of it instead of an entire quilt. All right, now we've got this guy here. I'm gonna pull that first one out and I'm gonna hold it in place with my fingers. At least I think I'm gonna hold it in place with my fingers. There we go. And we're gonna scoot them up here. A couple stitches in and then regroup a little bit. And you can see where if we still had those dog ears on, it would be hard to see. And really every little bit we need to see. I'm gonna lift up my foot just to make sure things are nice and straight. So my biggest tip for you in doing this one is just slow down. Take your time, give yourself some grace and be patient, especially if you've, ever, if you've never done anything quite like this before. But don't give up on it. I love it when my kids are watching me do something that is hard for me because they don't see adults doing hard things very often. We make everything look so easy and like we know how to do it all. And what a wonderful lesson for them to see that we don't, but we're willing to learn too, right alongside them. Make sure things are not moving in the wrong direction. And every time I pull those pins out, I am pressing extra hard with my finger to hold things in place. Are you guys thinking that we're all just sort of crazy for doing this block? We might be. <laughs> and if we weren't before, we might be now. Ricky certain gi certainly giving us a challenge this week. <laughs> Thanks, Ricky. Just what we needed, right? However, remember last time we talked about what an easy block the last one was? And I, I think that was... Ricky Tim's being kind to us in the pattern. And if you look ahead to the next block, number 21, it's a pretty easy one too. We'll be able to knock that one out pretty quickly. Alrighty. Let's see. Dun, 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 dun. Well, it's a little off. This one is okay. 
So the goal is to have all of these points meet nicely here, and I would love to have these line up. I could take that one out, but you know what? I'm not going to. We're just going to leave that today. And it's just going to be a witness to something new that we've tried. And that's okay, too. Okay, so we need to press this guy, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to attach it here. As soon as we have this done, we can go ahead and finish our block. We're so close, guys. Stay with me. Cheer me on. Because I'm going to be cheering you on while you're doing yours. You're going to hear my voice in your sewing room saying, you can do it. Don't quit. You can do it. <laughs> this one doesn't want to behave today. A little shot of steam ought to help it along. Let's try this side. And we talk a lot when we're doing curved things about pressing that it should be up and down, not back and forth. And as you're pulling, remember to straighten, don't stretch. And I will say this is where I was really making good use of my clapper while I was practicing. Denise, as a beginner quilter um, coming from garments, what is your opinion on clipping curved edges? Um, it's not something that's often done in quilts. And I think because our seam allowance is so small, I think if you had a very sharp curve, it probably would be really useful. Okay. Certainly something to try. I don't think it would hurt. Alrighty, let's go attach him. I have to say these little pieces are kind of cute, don't you think? All righty, guys, we are so close. So again, let's find our center. Let me turn off this thread here because that will be a distraction to me. So we'll put our points together here. So the next time you are at a quilt show and you see anything with a pickle dish, you will have a new respect and admiration for it because I know that you appreciated it before. But after you've done one or two, even just the block, you don't have to do the whole quilt. You will have that level of understanding that you go, oh, that poor dear. Okay, so we've got our center here and our center here. Same routine. We're getting really good at this pinning thing. I do want to find that center again though. And you could certainly mark that with a friction marker. And it should be pretty close to the center of this point. Some of mine worked out that way and some of them not so much. But I will say the second one is definitely better than the first one. And that's always the goal, right? And we're just gonna fold it, not fold it, but really bend it a little bit into shape. And keep going all the way down. I hope you guys are enjoying our videos. We did just get in um, a new supply of the books, the Granny's 1930 Sampler books. We had been out. So if you were on the fence about getting them or had a friend maybe that was considering it, now is the time. We have actually sold out of them, I think about three times now, which is kind of cool. And of course we have um, the other little one to go with it. The Lizzie Albright and the Attic Window. For those of you that might be new and watching this for the first time, the Lizzie Albright book is the little novel that Ricky Tins and his friend Kat Bowser wrote. And then our pattern book, the Granny's 1930 Sampler, um, the pattern in it and the blocks in it are based on the Lizzie Albright book. So it's kind of a fun multi-generational thing. 
the Lizzie Albright story is just a fun one and I think would make a wonderful read aloud. Or even if you just, you know, have a little beach reading to do. It's still summer. Kids are back in school, but they don't need to know that you went to the pool or the beach or the backyard. I won't tell if you won't. Now, I do want to open up our book and look at something here. Let's talk about how they have these sewn together. And we are on block number 20. Look at that, right to it. Okay, so as we are stitching these units here, when you get to the corner piece, the one that's actually going to be in the center of the block, you want to back stitch there. And we're going to do the same thing here. And then once we get this piece done, we're going to back stitch across the shorter ends too. So I wanted to make sure that you guys didn't miss that. I do think that's helpful. A little strength in our seam. Alrighty, so our center one, this is the one that we want to backstitch on. Perfect. Get my little pin dish here. And pull this first guy out. And we're going to start and cross our fingers. I was able to visit with one of our customers that is following along with our granny sampler. And Mary was telling me that she was appreciating the little break that we took. Um, we did not do, this video is not quite two weeks from the last video. There was a little break in there. Kind of felt like people had a lot going on with back to school things and some other things happening. So we were joking that Granny went on vacation and then we were toying with the idea of where would Granny go on vacation? What would she do? Would Granny go to the beach? I said, you know what? I think Granny's a little wild and I think Granny went to the casino and was playing the slots. Doesn't that sound like something a fun Granny would do? Kayla, what do you think Granny would be doing? I like the casino idea. <laughs> My grandma used to go to the casino all the time. Well, why not, right? <laughs> why not? She was lucky. All right, we're getting close here. So we're going to pull this guy out. Or maybe she went to go visit her grandkids. Uh, well, maybe she did. That's true. And maybe she hit the casino on the way back. Yeah. <laughs> Best of both worlds. <laughs> Granny's good at multitasking, right? I feel like you have to be. Right? Couple back stitches. And let's see what we've got. I think Granny would approve of our block. I think she'd be happy. Well, that doesn't look too bad. So we're going to finish this one off. We're going to backstitch here. Let's tuck this back under here. And for back stitching, you really just need a couple stitches. You don't have to go back an inch or more. All right. We can give this one a good press and then finish off our block. Trim off some threads here. Looking pretty good, guys. We're so close. Now let's press. We're going to go this way. And we've got a nice little point here 
and you can see our two green pieces almost line up not quite we just missed focus there we go there we go now you can see that little point and that's the goal and i look at it this way perfection is a great goal but sometimes i'm happy with yeah that's pretty good it just depends on what the project is i think for a pickle dish i'll take pretty good So I have to say, next time I have pickles, I'm going to be thinking of this block. All righty, so here we are. It's coming together. Let's finish it up. And we're going to pin away. Matching up those center seams to start with. I know this has been a particularly long video, so um, if you guys are still watching, <laughs> thank you. And I hope that you're finding something useful in what we're doing. And if nothing else, I hope you're getting a good laugh at what we're doing. Because we are. It's a lot of fun trying something new. We can talk for a minute about um, the next block, which is, the book calls it Puss in Boots. I think there's a couple different names for that one also. And again, that will be block number 21, which means we are halfway. It's that one. Can't. Squares and rectangles. Pretty simple compared to this guy. You should be able to knock that one out in your sleep, I'm thinking. We are going to do a little prize. Um, if you have been sharing your blocks on our show and tell page, we're gonna pick one of the names from people that have sh shared those and there will be a little giveaway. Just as a thank you for following along, for joining us on this crazy adventure. And then of course, when we finish, we'll celebrate again. And I'm gonna dream big and say, wouldn't it be nice if Ricky Timms could participate in our, our big celebration somehow? And put that out there to the universe and see if he gets the message, ha ha. There's a lot of scenes happening in here. And my pin doesn't want to go through them. There we go. And again, just straightening, not stretching. Almost. We've talked a lot about what is the, uh, the most challenging block you've ever done. And I'm curious, what do you think is the easiest? And it may not be, you know, a four patch or something like that. There may be one that your brain just completely gets and you can knock it out in your sleep. And I think for me, I don't really have any that I have done so many times that I can just knock it out. There certainly are some that are easier than others. Half square triangles, I kind of like. Kayla's working on some half square triangles all her own. How Too many are you many. doing? Too many. Too many. It's a beautiful sunset quilt. I'm anxious to see that one, Kayla. Me too, especially since it's a begin. It's my first quilt, <laughs> but. Apparently, it's very ambitious for a, a first-timer. You know, I think just because there are so many half-square triangles, but it's going to be beautiful. I have complete faith in you. Just got to take my time. That's right. Margaret's always telling me that garments are easier than quilts, and I'm still not convinced, but um, garments are definitely faster. They indeed are. <laughs> I mean, you could have a new garment to wear in an afternoon. 
All right, you come back here. They do want to wiggle on you. You know, I thought about too, would some applique glue be useful in this? I'm not sure, you could try it. It might be. The block next time, the Puss in Boots is a really easy one. The one after that, we're actually doing some applique. So if that's something that you haven't done before or have only done a little of, you'll definitely want to join us for that one. It's actually the Sun Bombant Sioux, which I know that everybody's familiar with. All righty. Any of these uh, items that we've talked about, whether it's the books or some of the notions and the tools, that we have are all available on our website. And that is universityofsewing.com. It's open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We love our online customers. We ship to anywhere and everywhere, which is kind of cool. We're keeping track. We have a little bulletin board here in the shop that when we get an order in from someplace new, we put a little thumbtack up there and it's kind of cool to see the number of thumbtacks grow. Curve piecing, paper piecing. This block has got it all. Tiny pieces. I think part of the challenge of most of the blocks in this pattern is that they are not large. They only finish at eight inches. I can imagine a 12 inch pickle dish would go much faster than this little guy. But I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's still the same technique. I think this is definitely one of those where you have to appreciate the journey and the process and trust the process. Trust that you know how to do these techniques and just jump in and go for it. And cross your fingers and see what happens. My guess is that you will be surprised. to make sure that we're not sewing the wrong part to the wrong part. That would be frustrating. There we go. <laughs> I did sew two of the paper pieced units to each other yesterday. That was a little disappointing. Huh. I squealed, oh no, and my girls came running over. What's wrong, Mom? look what I did and they went oh yes oh no is right they completely understood this guy has shifted a little so we're gonna pull him here and help him along into the right spot Wouldn't that be fun to have Ricky Tims join us for our, our big celebration? That'd be lovely. Wouldn't that be neat? Even if it was just a, a virtual thing, but gosh, in person. If we're going to dream, let's dream big, right? Anybody out there know Ricky? Send him a note. I bet he gets pictures all the time of people that have worked on this sampler. I wasn't a fan of samplers, but you know what? I think he's changed my mind. Just the idea of learning something new and every block is different. And I do think that's pretty cool. All right. Moment of truth. We need a drum roll. Drum roll, please. Well, guys, I think that'll do just fine. Let's go take it over and give it a good press. Trim off a thread or two, or three or four. Let's see. 
where to press, where to begin to press. I think I'll go this way and just kind of follow the natural fold the way the fabric's going to go. A little shot of steam is never a bad thing. And of course, I've got my wool pressing mat that I love. That's doing double duty. And then of course, with the clapper on top of it, the results are pretty nice. So close, so close. Alrighty guys, here she is. It's a little off here. Could probably undo that and wiggle that out a little bit. We'll see, I'm gonna let it stew and marinate for a while and see if we need to make any adjustments to it. And of course these, this is all within your quarter inch seam allowance. So when you sew it to the sashi and when we finish, that will all get cleaned up. And this is our eight and a half unfinished block. It'll be eight inches finished, which is really pretty small for a quilt block, but that's how we get 42 blocks in one big sampler. So guys, this has been our marathon edition of Granny Sampler. This is our block number 20, the pickle dish. Thank you so much for sticking with us and for sticking with this block. I'm really anxious to see what you guys come up with. Be sure to join us next time as we do block number 21 and have our halfway party. For everybody at the University of Sewing, thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time.